In this video, we will go over the front end of our application. The front end has been designed in React GS. As you can see on the current screen, we have the following functionalities to implement. First of all, we have to add an option to upload an image. Then we have a process button. Upon pressing it, we will call the object detection from our backend. Afterwards, we will receive the processed image along with the bounding boxes and the classes. Similarly, we will receive the detected labels, and then we will have this chatbot right here on the right side. Then we can chat with the ChatGPT models. Let's start by building this front end. In order to create the front end of the application using React, you must ensure that we have Node installed in your system. If you have not installed Node yet, please go ahead and install Node in all packages like MPX and NPM. Although MPX and NPM mostly come bundled with Node if you follow the default installation steps. Once you're done, you may head over to the folder where we store all the code files for our application. Here, open the terminal in this folder so we can proceed. So this is the folder. I have already created the front end. Let me just quickly show you how you can do it. If we open this in the terminal, you will have to run the command npx create react app and then the name of the app. Although I have already created a front end folder, so I gave it the name front end. Let's give it a different name, however. So let's put crop disease front end. Now I will just run the command npm start. As you can see, we have a very basic front page for our application which just shows the reacting work rotating. Now we can start working on the code. So far we have successfully installed React and created our first React application. Let me just delete this since we already created a new folder for our front end. All right, now all you have to do is open VS Code or any other text editor that you use. You also need to open the crop disease folder. Here it is. As you can see, it contains node modules, packages of files, a public folder which contains all your assets, and a source folder that contains the source code for this application. If I quickly show you this in Visual Studio Code, this is how it looks like in Visual Studio Code. So I have made a few changes. In the index.js file in the source folder, I have added one line which is the import bootstrap dist css bootstrap .min .css, and the index.html file, I have also included the bootstrap. I will have to do one more thing and that is to install the bootstrap. I will do it by using the command npm install bootstrap. This will install the bootstrap in the nodes modules folder. So I'm done. Now what I can do is run the application again using the command npm start and see how it looks like. Yeah, it's working fine. No errors in respect to the console. So it's working perfectly. Now we can continue building on this application. The changes in the index.js and index.html file are in place. Also, we have installed Bootstrap in a node module for Bootstrap. I have made a few changes in the app.css file, so you don't need to worry about it. You can quickly go over to see the styling. Since this is not the main content of this application, you can just ignore it for now and focus on the app.js file, which is basically covering the main functionality of our application. As you can see here, we are importing the app.css file, and this is basically the default boilerplate code that was provided when we created the React application. So we'll now start editing it. Here you can see we have a functional component called app, which is basically being rendered when we run the application. This is the JXX, which is being rendered by default. Now, if I can quickly show you that, this is the HTML or the JSX space that has been rendered currently by default. Let me just remove this since we are going to implement our own functionalities. First of all, let's create a div and use the class name equals container MT-5. So this is from Bootstrap. Initially, let's add the title of our application, which is crop disease identification. Also, put the class name from the CSS that we want to add, which is text center. So I'm going to save this and let's see the changes here. We can see that the title crop disease identification has been rendered here. 
Essentially, how React works is that the final HTML page that is rendered is actually written in this return statement. This is the HTML that we see on our page. Now, coming to the core component of this functionality of our application, we will use the use state from React. We will import React, then use the use state quote from React. After importing the use state quote, we would define the states that we will use in this application. So first of all, we will use the image state and the function that will set the state will be set image. Let's set the initial value to null. Initially, the state contains null, the image state. Similarly, we will add some other states. So let's proceed. Another state that we will use is loading. So this will basically help us know if we are performing some sort of operation on the back end. We can give that feedback to the user on the front end. Initially, the loading would be set to false. Similarly, we will also use the processed image state that will basically store the results of the detection which will come from the back end. Again, this will also be null initially. So we will use the detected label state and initially it will also be set to null. We also need to store the messages that are sent to the back end to the chatbot and from the messages that we receive from the back end. They will be set to an empty array. Of course, we need to store the user input as well, so that would be initially an empty string. Similarly, if you want to display any warning, let's put set warning and initially that would be an empty string. If let's say the back end is working on sending the messages to ChatGPT and receiving the messages back. So we want to show some sort of loading. For that, we will create a set chat loading state and it would be false. Now, these are all the states that we want to use. Basically, we can write the functions in which we will handle various events, so let's do that. So let's say if the user uploads an image, we will write a function called handle image change. So we read the file which has been uploaded by the user using e.target.files. We will initialize a file reader and then we will call all these states. Essentially, what we want to do is whenever a user uploads a new image, we need to reset everything. So the messages will be set to empty because if, well, let's say the user has first uploaded an image and asked questions around it, but if they upload a new image, we need to reset all the messages and essentially create a new state for everything. Now we set and clear all the states. So first of all, we set the messages to empty, set the processed image to null, and set detected label to null, and set loading will be false. And the warning message is also empty. After making all these changes, we will define reader.readAsDataURL and then we will pass the file. Then reader.onloadN when the file is loaded is equal to a function which will basically set the image that has been uploaded by the user. So set image to reader.result. We have created the case for uploading the image. Now let's add some HTML or the JSX for it. After we have set the title, we want the image upper section to be on the left side of the page. So let me create a new div. So div class name equals app body deflex. Then I will create another div which will contain the left content of our application. So the class name will be left content. Let me just quickly add the logo here. So the image source will be backslash download.png. Essentially, we are pointing towards this file. We don't need to add the public slash down.png for this public. The assets in the public folder are at the root of the application. The class name is equal to Heather image. Now we'll add a conditional block in JSX. As you can see, this is what this block shows. It is a conditional statement that if let's say if an image is true, then do this thing, whatever it is in the parentheses. Initially, you can see that we have set the image state to null, but if the user has uploaded an image, this will be set to true. So we can show the uploaded image as a preview. So I will take the class name is equal to MT-4. Yeah, we'll add the heading and use the H3 heading. Next, we'll write the text preview. 
This way it will display the image and the source is going to be the image the user has uploaded. Then alt equals preview and the class name is equal to image thumbnail. So this should show the image that the user uploads. We have not yet added anything for the event handler when the image is changed. So let's have it done first. So for that, we will add a div. So this will be an empty dash four container. Then we will add an input tag so that the user can upload a file. And I will accept images and just put the class name for this tag. Class name equals form control file. And on change will be the handle image change function. As you can see, you can now upload an image. Let's see if let's say I upload this image. We can see this image being displayed right here.